Hey everybody, Rudy here from the Home Improvement Channel with another video showing you how to fix things around the house. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to install a kitchen faucet. This is a very easy DIY project that you can do yourself. I know you can do it. I'm here as your guide, so just follow along. If you like this video, click on the thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, click that subscribe button. I come out with videos like this as often as I can. So without further ado, let's dive right in. So the first thing you're going to want to do is kind of open your box and go through everything and make sure everything is there. Um, you might notice that these newer faucets have this, a line that's already made onto the faucet, which is real nice. Uh, not all of them have this. If yours doesn't have a line that's already made onto there, uh, you're going to have to um, replace the lines, especially if your old faucet has a solid copper line on there. Um, I would not recommend reusing those. Uh, so get new lines if you don't already have these. Uh, this particular faucet came with this water valve here. It's got a touch sensor in there. But I'm not even going to hook that up because um, I read the reviews on that and there was some pretty bad reviews on that part of it. The rest of the faucet is okay. But um, I'm not going to use that. And the way that they've got the hoses, you can actually hook it up without that. Before we get started here, you might notice this air gap right here for the dishwasher. The new faucet is going to use three holes here for the main faucet and then it has another one for the soap dispenser. So I have two choices here. I can either get rid of this and put the soap dispenser here and do a high loop on the dishwasher drain, which I'm going to show you what I'm going to do there. Or I could drill another hole in the sink for the uh, soap dispenser. I don't really want to do that. I don't have the right size drill bit that I need for all that and it's just too much trouble to go through all that. So I'm going to remove this and I'm going to turn this air gap into a high loop um, type drain for the dishwasher. Alright, obviously before you want to start anything like this you're going to turn off the water. All right, just wanted to say one thing here. Um, if you turn off your water and you notice that you're getting a dripping coming from, actually, yeah, so the, you can, I can see it a little bit on my finger there. There is a little bit of a drip there. Um, a lot of times you can take a wrench and put it on here, right on this nut right here, and give that a little tighten right there. I see another drop came out of there and give that a little tighten and this valve here looks a lot newer than the other one just do the same thing to that one um, that can a lot of times fix that little problem right there a lot of times I've also noticed on these old valves like this when you shut them off and then you disconnect the water line it actually keeps coming out of the top a little bit because the valve is old and it won't shut off all the way if that happens you either have to change the valve or put a bucket under it until you're done. Once you shut off the valves, I'm going to go ahead and open the um, the faucet on the top to relieve any pressure that's in there. And you're still going to get some dripping, so you'll probably want to have a towel handy or uh, something like that. So as you can see here, I'm still dripping. The, the problem that I was just describing is existing here, and I'm sure it's that old valve that's on the left side that's uh, the culprit. One thing that you could do here temporarily is if you do have a disconnectable hose like this, disconnect it and then turn it down and put it in a bucket with the hose still hooked up on the wall. That way you're not swimming while you're trying to get all this done. And just disconnect the other side, same way. This one I can disconnect because it's not leaking. Sorry, you're going to have this dripping noise. Alright, so this is your main line going to the faucet. So just usually squeeze here 
and pull and that'll get that disconnected and there we go just like so and then these you're going to want to kind of put them together like that so that they'll uh, they'll go through that hole in the middle now this side here it's got a uh, a weight attached to it right here and also the other end is uh, what I took off of there and none of those are going to fit through that hole so the the easiest solution for that is a pair of scissors and just cut it and get rid of it the only thing holding this in here at this point is these two right here and luckily this one's new enough it's got these plastic nuts so you can get these off by hand if you've got an older one that's got the uh, metal ones a lot of times they're going to be rusted and um, you can use a wrench that looks like this or you can use a deep, so uh, deep socket maybe if you've got a regular nut there you can use one of those I've actually run into some where the, the middle has got a big nut and it's threaded and that is so rusty there was just no way in the world that was ever going to come off of there so I actually had to take, I mean this has happened to me more than once and it might happen to you too if you're watching this where if that big nut is rusty I mean obviously try to get it loose spray it with a PB blaster or something like that but if none of that stuff is going to work I've actually had to take a grinder a, a, a side grinder with a wheel on it and cut the top without you know letting the sparks destroy anything you kinda gotta watch where the sparks go and watch where the grinding wheel goes so you don't wind up cutting your sink up and I've had to use one of those and cut it from the top because there was just no getting it loose I've, I've ran into that a couple times and that does work you might think that's not a good option but it actually does work so if you run into that where you can't get it loose you might have to use that as a last resort and it's all loose from the top here just pull that out and get rid of it you might have to finagle that through there so what we have is uh, three holes and some goop there to uh, clean up so I'm gonna clean that up and then I'm gonna get rid of this guy here Remember I said earlier I wanted to get rid of this air gap right here so just undo the hoses undo the clamps both of them as you can see the other end of that goes into the garbage disposal all right so to get this air gap here just have somebody if you have somebody hold that uh, on the top and I'll go underneath and unscrew that and it should come right out of there okay mine came off yeah I just wanted to show you what I did here with the uh, dishwasher drain if you ran into this problem you can do the same thing obviously the, uh, the line for the dishwasher goes straight into the garbage disposal and then I attached it up there at the highest point that I could get it I think they recommend at least 32 inches on that above the uh, floor and we definitely have that I checked it out and this uh, this should work just fine all right the soap dispenser is real easy just take the uh, the nut off it's probably installed on there from the factory and make sure this uh, gasket is underneath and just put it in through the top and if you have somebody to hold that uh, while you put the nut on on the bottom that would be uh, a good thing all right as you can see here we're not quite in the middle of the hole and just put the nut on And just tighten it by hand okay and then just take the, uh, the dispenser and it screws on the bottom that's it and then the top part the straw is probably disconnected in the box so just put the straw in there and drop it down in that's all there is to that so this particular faucet comes with this plate right here that's because this, uh, this faucet can either be made for a single hole sink or a three hole like we have here. Now if you have one like this, you'll probably just need a, a sink with one hole in the middle like that and then these two won't be here. 
but since these are already here, we have to cover those up, obviously. So just put that in there, and then I'll put the nuts on from underneath. If you have a helper for the top, that would be better to keep it from moving. Some of these have a metal nut that has a, a piece of metal that spans across this hole right here. If you have one of those, the metal goes on first, and then the spacer, and then the nut goes on top of the spacer. Uh, but a lot of these just have plastic nuts anymore. That way there's no rust problems. So on this one here, I made a piece of wood to go on the bottom because I believe that this is going to be kind of flimsy. So I'm trying to put this wood, this is obviously going on the bottom, uh, to try to uh, shore that up a little bit. So just put the uh, hoses through there. This wire here is for that sensor I told you about in the beginning that I'm just going to bypass. I don't need that. I just want a faucet that works. Don't need all that fancy stuff that's going to quit in two weeks. Alright, so I've got a big washer that goes next and then the nut. Just got to thread everything up there. Alright, so if you have a nut that looks like this one with the screws, you just get that big nut as tight uh, as you can by hand and then just go back with a Phillips screwdriver and tighten that up against the wood. Alright, so this right here is your main hose that goes up to the uh, faucet where it comes out. Just Like I said earlier, this one had a uh, water valve that I just want to bypass and forget about, so just usually push push that right on there and then give it a pull backwards to make sure that it's attached which it is and then uh, we're gonna put a weight on this in a minute and I'll show you now just hook up your uh, supply lines normally your supply lines are gonna be labeled this one says cold so that goes to the other side and when you're doing this make sure you don't tangle up this hose it needs to move freely up and down so that you can pull your uh, your sprayer out so just make sure that those are freely moving they don't have to be super tight because there is a rubber gasket in there just good and snug and then check it for leaks All right, that's about it on that. Let me do the other side. That way I can get this other hose off and stop this ridiculous leaking. All right, that's got the uh, lines tight. Only thing left now is to put that weight on the uh, hose and turn the water back on. We can go ahead and turn the water on now. All right. I know you can't read it, but there's a piece of tape right here on the other side of the tape. It says to put the weight right here. Maybe yours will have some instruction like that. Just clamp that puppy on there. Yeah, one little tip I wanted to show is, is um, if the bottom of your cabinet looks kind of rough, you could get these vinyl uh, peel and stick tiles right here and put on the bottom of your cabinet. And uh, they uh, make a nice surface in there for you to set all your stuff on. But um, one other thing I wanted to mention here was the uh, the weight. When it moves up and down, it might interfere with the other hoses that are there. So you might have to tie back the uh, supply lines to get them out of the way so the weight can uh, go up and down smoothly. Yeah, let's give it a test. Looks like it's working good.